cat's probably going to be in it because she is attention craving as hell right now. But this right here, I thought so. I know. Come on. Come on. Hey there. Anyway, fellas, this is the CMP. Civilian Marksmanship Program, 1911. It comes in this fancy, like, plastic box. I'm not really sure. It has, like, this blow-off valve. And here is the 1911. The 1911A1, I should say. So, it comes with one mag. Some sort of uh, Metgar. It's made in Italy, so I'm assuming it's a Metgar mag. It's kind of the same magazine that you would see. Um, yeah, it says Metgar right there. Uh, it's the same Metgar mag that you would probably get for those rock islands and stuff like that. They're really good. They really are. They're not bad. Um, you get the gun, which is right here. Colt 1911 slide has an Ithaca frame. Uh, almost everything on this is original um, for the era, I guess, except for the barrel's been replaced, which is cool because I got a chrome line barrel. I think this has been replaced too because I think they were checkered back then, not uh, this... Uh, vertical line uh they were everything was checkered like the hammer you see here hammer and the uh, safety this might have been replaced too because it's vertical or this in this case horizontal so it comes with uh the, the case and under here you get um like a little authenticity thing gun lock tag slide colt frame ithaca 1911a1 instructions it comes with a Letter of Authenticity, as you can see, you know, it has your name and information and everything on it. Um, hide the top part so you get idea. So, um, it comes with that. Offer for some sort of holster if you want to role play as a uh, World War II soldier. Just the manual here is just uh, your basic military reproduction manual, you know. I, get, I don't know. I guess they hand this out to people during World War II and told them to study it. So here we are. Really nice uh, plastic grips, which is, you know, I believe at the time they didn't use wood. World War I, I believe they did. And uh, so you got the plastic grips, which has some battle scars. Looks like a 69 carved into it. You see that? Um, this side's kind of nice. United States property, M1911A1. United States Army. Pretty cool. Has an original trigger. You can see it has that checkering instead of the, the serrations. Um, the barrel, like I said, is chrome lined. Um, you, it's new. Maybe we'll take it apart. Got some stamps here. FIA, F. Um, my lanyard was actually bent. No big deal. I don't really plan on carrying this. Um, no sense in safety checking it, but for the safety sallies out there um so yeah i guess we'll just assemble it and show, i'll show you that barrel safety yarn take that off i think you flip this around the other way yep oh. it's been quite some time since i played with the 1911 i used to have a don't do the idiot scratch I used to have a colt 70 series and i loved it and it was kind of basically what I pretend this would be, um, and it's not, it was nicer gun, um, being modern manufactured and all of that fancy stuff. Yeah, here's a new barrel, has like a little number on there, got the oil on there, it's good. Um, no, you, you can just tell it's, it's a modern, uh, replacement barrel, it has, uh, great rifling, no rust, it's, you can see here it's chrome lined, which is awesome. Really cool. I like that. Uh, so you can shoot it, uh, not feel bad about it, but to be honest, I don't shoot it often. I can actually bore light this thing. You can see that thing is shiny, shiny, shiny. Pretty cool. So chrome lined. 
the inside here. You can see all the old original 1940s. I think I looked up the serial number and this was made in like 44, um, I want to say. Uh, so it probably didn't see much, much action in World War II. Um, it probably seen some action in Korea, Vietnam. Um, if it did, don't really know. But uh, it don't look that worn out at all. This was the uh, top grade. I think they call it the service grade. Rails are really good. Probably oil it up and then put it back together. Slide markings are faint, but they're uh, your Colt patent dates and everything. I really love the original Colt markings. How I got it, this, is um, I applied for it and everybody... Um, I pretty much forgot about it and during, um, you know, the lockdowns, uh, this is EWL, Slip 2000's great stuff. During the lockdowns, I got a phone call and, um, I was like, what the, you know, hell? Talking about 1911, I've, com I've completely forgot about it. I thought they all sold and pretty much, um, that was it, you know? And, uh, the cool part is... They didn't, and so I called the number back, talked to the lady, and she asked me, do you have any preference? And I said, uh, you mean like I get to pick my own? And she says, well, you, we can help, you know, like we might be able to get what you want. And I said, well, I want a Colt. And she says, Colt slide or Colt frame? And I said, I guess you can't get both, can you? And she's like, no, you can only, she's like, for the ones that match like that, they generally get auctioned off, you know? I was like, well... I'll take the um, the Colt slide because that's what I really like. I like the markings on it. And there's not much difference between a Colt slide and any other slide. So if it's all about looks, then whatever. I'll just take the Colt slide. And lo and behold, that's what I got. So that was pretty cool of them to do. CMP is pretty awesome. They have one uh, that you can actually visit in um, Camp Perry, Ohio. And they have one in uh, Alabama. I'm not really sure what part of Alabama, though. So, I always want to go up there and grab a Craig Jorgson if I were lucky enough to get one. Or a 1903 Springfield or an Eddie Stone, which I heard they get from time to time. It's just not um, common. Not now, anyway, since all of that surplus stuff has pretty, for the most part, dried up. So... Yeah, but I figured I'd take it apart, oil it, and show it off. It's a pretty good gun. Like I said, I don't shoot it that much. Um, I think I've taken this out maybe twice. Maybe once, to be honest. Um, I have a CMP M1 as well, and I don't take that thing out either. These are sort of uh, collector pieces to me uh, because of their age and their historic significance. I kind of don't like beating them up. It ain't like a, I mean, I could, you go to the store, and you can buy... A 1911, beat the shit out of it, no big deal, right? Parts availability, there's no historic significance to it. I mean, this 1911, for example, um, was made during 44. The frame was, at least. The slide could be older. Um, during World War II, could be used in World War II, uh, either in the Pacific or the um, European theater. Uh, so, I mean, it has significant value i uh historic value so i do not shoot it regularly and uh, that's just it is, you know it's my choice i guess um some people say what's the point of having it not shooting it but it's a piece of history it's working history and i want it to work for a long time so i do shoot it i just don't shoot it often but oh yeah that's a lot smoother reset Grip safety, no fire, no fire, should fire, boom. Beautiful. That's how I usually do it. Might take a little coat of oil and put it on the finish here, but this parkerization really holds oil, does a good job. Wouldn't use this EWL to, to exactly do that. I use a um, less expensive oil, um, something like G96, and a patch be more appropriate oh yeah the heat treating so you can see here the barrel or not the barrel but the slide is so what i understand is when they were heat treating these they wanted to heat treat them back here where you know i guess the little explosions happen 
and they had a machine or whatever that would hold them here and or up here or something and this is where they would be heat treated basically from that line back and you can see the circles all the way around and um what's cool is um it gives it this weird appearance where it's like two-tone so the heat treated steel apparently takes the the parkerization slightly different that's why you can actually see that so i thought that was interesting when i first got this i was like what is that about so i researched it that's what they say is the reason this g96 is great stuff um it smells like eggnog great stuff been using it for years and years and years what i do i'll probably put like a coat of oil on it like you're seeing a heavy coat and then i'll take a shop rag a scott's shop rag shop towel whatever they call them things it's a rag and uh towels i think you keep rags you throw away i think that's how it works um i'm sure there'll be somebody out there no 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 that's not how it works i really like the uh model of 1911 they were the ones without the little cutouts here on the slide or on the frame you had a, a longer trigger you had the um not the cutouts here for the finger and the back straps were flat which is kind of interesting because a lot of modern 1911s are made that way now and it's interesting the the government decided to remove those features to add these features and then after you know the war those features were kind of discarded and a lot of the commercial stuff has um the old stuff instead of this i take scott towel see you don't need to keep your gun soaking wet it's probably not good i actually i have a winchester model 12 and uh, when i i bought it it was uh it's made in the 50s i don't the story was the guy who had it uh passed away and um i guess a family member or whatever was selling it for him and um you know like it's just been oiled and stuck in a closet for years and years when i got it i took it apart and boy that that oil has turned into a gum it it, it looked like a like a shellac man it was nuts so don't have to do that to your firearms it kind of looked like this mark right here if you can see this little shiny piece, the whole inside of that Winchester Model 12 was covered in something like that. And I don't know if that's old oil that's been dried up and or, or some sort of finish or, or wear. I'm not sure. I'm not taking it off. It's not hurting anything. But the inside of my Winchester was covered with this. And it was like, you know what removed it? It was lighter fluid. <laughs> Zippo lighter fluid. I figured I'd show it to you guys. Uh, it's one of the cooler, interesting pieces in my collection and i don't have i'm not like military arms channel fella or anybody on youtube i wish i had a collection like that but i don't um this is pretty much it also you you should check to see if the slide stop works on these and they take regular mags regular 1911 mags i know this from yeah so locks back on last round very good stiff oh it's very stiff there we go so pretty good piece pretty good piece and so that's pretty much it i uh, hope you like this it's a little bit different content than we're used to um like and subscribe if you dig it um i'm assuming a lot of you guys watching would probably be searching for cmp 1911s and that's why you wanted to see this video a lot of subscribers probably didn't ask for this since i'm primarily a knife channel but I figured, why not uh, showcase this great piece of great piece of American history? So like and subscribe. I'll do some more uh, firearm related stuff and reloading things as well. And uh, but yeah, that's the M nineteen eleven A one from the Civilian Marksmanship Program. And I did get it in twenty twenty, so I don't know what's going on in twenty one. Um, but it gives you an idea what the service grades are like. Appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Maybe I'll show you some other antique firearm. All right. See ya.